Accessing databases from Python. Aims and objectives for this session then are first of all to understand the need to access databases from Python, to look at the idea of database APIs, that's application programming interfaces, to look at the PEP249 database API standard, and at the end of the session you should be able to write a Python script to read from or write to a database. And in the practical, you'll do exactly that, write a script to read from a database. Part 1. Why do we want to access databases from Python? And why do we need a standard API? Now, you've seen this slide before looking at the idea of a web browser accessing web pages, and those could be static pages as shown up here, or the web browser could be accessing a CGI script which talks to external programs or to, talks to a relational database. Now, in this instance, of course, our CGI script, which you're likely to be writing in Python, would need to be able to talk to this relational database. Other examples include populating databases. We often need to pre-process data and reformat it into SQL in order to put it into a database. And sometimes having a relational database as some form of intermediate storage for data during complex data processing can be useful. We also want to be able to read data from a database. Good database design can lead to quite complex queries because you have split your data into multiple tables and therefore you need some sort of wrapper to be able to extract the data in an easy way. And of course we need to be able to extract data from a database in order to be able to process it. Database APIs. Why do we need some sort of standardized API? Now, API is a term that you will come across a lot and we will talk about again. It's very simple. It just means that we have a standard way of calling a library of functions. We have defined what those functions are, what goes into them, and what comes back from them. Now, there are many different relational databases. Commercial examples include Oracle, DB2, SQL Server and so on. And open source examples include PostgreSQL and MySQL. So a standardized API would allow us to access all of these databases in the same way. Basically it means that you don't care what the underlying database is from your code. You just access it in exactly the same way. Now, most databases use a common query language, the Structured Query Language, or SQL, so the queries can easily be ported between different database software. That said, there are minor variations in more advanced features, and some of the databases have proprietary extensions to SQL. But if you follow the SQL standard, you should be able to port your actual SQL queries, your populating of data between different databases. However, the way that you actually connect to the database is going to depend on the database software unless you have some sort of standardized API. What about the kind of easy way of approaching this? Well, we've seen before the idea uh, of being able to call external programs from within Python scripts. So we could call the command line interface from within your program by using a subprocessor as we've done before. So when you don't need the output, for example, you're putting something into a database or you're creating a database table, all you need to do is import the subprocess module and use the subprocess.call to pass the command with shell equals true. So a couple of examples here, uh, not related to a database, but uh, making a directory, uh, getting the output of a command and putting it into a file. So 
even though we're not getting the data back from the command directly, we're creating a file which we could then read uh, in order to get the results back. When you do need the output, what you generally do instead is import the subprocess module and then call subprocess.checkoutput, which will create a return value uh, and then we need to convert that from a byte string into a normal string in order to be able to process it. So again, here's an example using ls, getting the results back, converting to a string. So for databases that would appear to be the simple thing to do. And here's what we could do in order to do that. Uh, we import subprocess. So here we're creating a string uh, where we're specifying the MySQL command. We're running it as a batch process. Uh, we're running it in silent mode and we're executing this query. So we call subprocess.checkoutput, passing it that string. We convert the result into a standard string and then we can split it up into the rows that get returned by doing result.split on a backslash n, a return character. And then we can go through each of those tuples that's been returned and we can split it up into fields, splitting up on a tab. And then we can print the data or obviously do whatever other processing we need to do with those data. However, the problem with this is that it is very inefficient. We create a new process for each access to the database. So if all we're doing is populating a database and perhaps only calling it once or twice, then this is a perfectly good thing to do. But if we're doing complex data processing, then it really is not a good idea. So this is actually something that I did some years ago. Um, I was using PostgreSQL. I was using um, this type of approach and using it to process a data set. So data was going into the database and coming out of the database thousands of queries involved and it took about a week to run. Now I then modified the code to call the database directly rather than uh, through a subprocess and the runtime went down to about one hour. So it really is incredibly inefficient uh, and you're going to waste a lot of time. Why then do we need a standardized API? Well, databases generally provide their own APIs to allow access from programming languages such as C, Java, Perl, Python, and so on. But all these different proprietary APIs are all different from one another. And that, as I mentioned before, gets us away from the idea of being able to port the software between dif different databases. While we can port the SQL easily, because that's generally pretty much the same, the APIs, the way that we connect to the database, can be very different. And thus, these standardized APIs have become available. In part two of the lecture, we're going to look at PEP249, which is the most commonly used standard API for accessing databases from Python.